Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Adobe Live. Uh, I'm joined today by Josh Peters, and we've got a 90-minute session involved. Uh, so, Josh, please uh, introduce yourself and uh, tell us a little bit about what you're about, and then we'll go through the admin of the chat. Okay, so yeah, I'm pretty much, my name is Josh Peters. I'm a content creator based in London. Um, I do all sorts of work. Um, I'm really into photography as well, like street photography and stuff. Um, I've probably been full time doing content creation for about just over a year now. So I'm pretty new to it still, but I'm pretty happy with where I've come now, considering the last year has been a crazy year. Yeah, definitely. Um, so yeah, so sort of my, my, my freelance work, I <laughs> I started in weddings, which they all got cancelled this year. Um, and I also do a lot of real estate. Um, that's probably been my main sort of source of income this year. And then on the side, I've done been doing like stuff like TikTok and I've been making like social media, like content. Um, and yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty much a bit about me sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, that's, uh, that's already quite a, a different start to a lot of people. Um, I mean, not many people uh, would have been able to have started stuff in the pandemic, but likewise, a lot of people have kind of been forced to and you know things have happened but i'm just glad that it's it's working out successfully and um yeah off to a fly and start with that so for all of those who are watching uh, if you're joining us on youtube that's fine you can continue to stay there however if you wanted to join in with the chat please come and join us on behance uh, so we've got live streams here on mondays wednesdays and fridays uh, and we've got a chat active so there's plenty of people in there, uh, a lot of regular faces. Um, so hello, hello to Sandrine, Kirsty, Oliver, uh, Sean, and uh, Andreas, and uh, other people scrolling up, scrolling up. Gareth, hello, hello. So uh, yeah, welcome uh, everyone. And uh, Josh, what are we going to run through today? What's the uh, what's the plan of action? Okay, so recently I took part in a Adobe campaign, which is their destination imagination. So I put sort of put my sort of like touch on things. So we're pretty much going to go by how I edited this whole image here. Um, so I went out and I pretty much got two photos, one of me holding this little rope here. And then I got this like sort of like oval sort of light above me. Mm -hmm. Don't ask how I came up with this sort of idea. It's well, I'll tell you what, no, my first first initial thoughts was like destination imagination. It was during the pandemic, so I thought there's not many places in the like the world I would want to be right now to everyone's suffering. So I thought mm -hmm. it would just sort of escape Earth, and I, I don't know how I came up with this idea, but it, it worked for me, and I'm quite happy with how it came off. So yeah, we're, we're going to go through, and I'm going to show you how I done that. Um, pretty much, there's one photo. Is this and, just a, a random field? <laughs> you just yeah, just, found just beyond in? the house. Yeah, yeah, just I just walked in there and then I got the circle there. And then after that, I'll um, we'll run through some like sort of like maybe how I'd go about doing my street photography sort of editing style. Um, mm -hmm. I haven't actually edited any of these images properly yet. So it'll sort of be you'll see how I go about editing like first hand sort of thing, which I'll be yeah. really good. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, of course, doing this live, anything can happen, technical difficulties and whatnot, yep. <laughs> but that's all part of the fun of it, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. So uh, so this shot in the field, um, you said, don't ask me how it came about, but I'm going to ask you how it came about. Is this, uh, when you went out into the field, did you have any particular idea on what it was you were looking to start with on, on anything? Yeah, so I, I, I did plan it out, sort of drew out what was in my mind. Um, I just kind of made it work. I wish I had the piece of paper to show you. I literally draw like a stick man with the mm -hmm. rope going to the, to the moon. Um, I did plan to like put planets in there and everything, but when I've done that, it was just too much. Uh, like, right. I like the simplicity of like just the moon straight down to me. And then, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I like the idea of having sort of oval above me, sort of like I'm going through a light. I don't, I don't know what it represents, but I thought it looked <laughs> cool. Um, so yeah, that, that was just like a long exposure. I put a light on top of a light stand and just walked around in a circle and actually yep. took plenty of tries because you can see it's quite difficult oh, yeah, to get course. that sort of perfect circle. But we got there and I, I, and I, I was kind of cheated in a, in a way. So I'll, I'll yep. show you guys later on. <laughs> were, you, yeah. um, were you using a remote to trigger your camera or are you running back and forth with a, a timer on things? 
so I literally just done it with a timer. So I, I pressed the button two second timer and went and got in the shot sort of thing. I think this was a 10 second timer. Yeah. And w- with this one, so I did and it had the idea of like standing there holding the rope, but I wanted to keep it all looking natural so that when I put that ring of light in, that it looks like it's lighting up my face, which mm-hmm. is why I brung in this light here. Yep. So like just light up that half of my face so it, it looks natural sort of thing. Uh yeah, yeah pretty much a, any any time you can get it natural in camera is gonna give you huge results, especially on composite work, right? Exactly, exactly. So yeah, um yeah, do, do you want me to go ahead and start showing you like where I started with this? Yeah, please do. Okay, cool. So yeah, with this one I usually with my Instagram stuff I would go in and crop it to a four by five straight away. But because the, the final photo wasn't there at all, so I, I, I kind of just kept it with it without the props. So and then I cropped it at the end. Um, so yeah, on, in Lightroom, I didn't really do too much work. I just corrected the colors and just like lifted the shadows a bit. Um, and then most of the work was done in Photoshop. So I just warm, warmed it up a bit mm-hmm. and then just boosted it a bit. And then the shadows and now all, all I've done was come down here and just done a few corrections to the, what the lenses do and everything. And then literally that, that, that was pretty much it. And then we'll, we'll take it into Photoshop and, and work from there. Maybe just yeah. take a few shadows. And then- Am I right in thinking that you use a Canon 1DX? Uh, yeah, how did you how did you guess that? Uh, I saw it on your YouTube. Oh, okay, sweet, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so for this I used a Canon 1DX, but recently I, I've upgraded to, well, upgraded, sort of just got a second camera, which is like the R6, which is like mirrorless. Okay. Nice. And I'm, I'm all for mirrorless now. I love mirrorless. Yeah. I used to like, used to try not to love it, but. Oh, really? Yeah. But yeah, I yeah, love it now. It's uh, it's definitely um, uh, kind of a, a wave of photography and, you know, at some point the wave will catch you. It just depends on, on when. Literally. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. Okay, cool. And yeah, and also, I, I, it's, I, I cheated this, okay? The, the idea was there, so I hope you guys appreciate that. <laughs> Obviously, I've gone there to get a long exposure, but in the edit, I, I didn't use it. I just created my own, um, I'll actually show you. I, I created my own sort of light. Yeah. Um, I, I, li- I literally just went down to here and used this tool and just created my own sort of light thing yeah so I'll, I'll show you how i got into that later so but the idea was there and i want you guys to know that <laughs> so we'll um so kind of we'll, we'll forget this image now sort of thing yeah uh so yeah so when i'm editing like through lightroom and photoshop all i do is on the lightroom i'll just right click and then edit in photoshop and it's, it's a really nice easy way to go to and from each app sort of thing there's uh people in the chat uh also fans of the mirrorless um oliver saying went outside and uh did first shoot with a mirrorless on monday and sold in it now too uh definitely once you pick up a mirrorless and you you experience it i remember one of my first hesitations about it was having a, an electronic uh viewfinder rather than optical one and yeah. i i was just always a bit unsure and i think the the best or the first best one that i experienced was a few years back with the sony a7r2 i was like you know what this uh this makes a big deal especially for filming uh being able to bring it up to your face and and film without having to hold it out and use the back screen um converted ever since pretty much yeah they're, they're, they're wicked tools and like, I, I, I tried to hold it off like i said but yeah they're, they're just wicked yeah yeah um Okay, so cool. Um, yeah, so we've brought it into Photoshop. Now, the first thing I'll do for every single Photoshop do is I'll make a copy of this. So Command J, and then I'll just remove it there and, and just forget about it. So if anything ever goes wrong, I've always got that just just sitting around sort of thing. Um, so the first thing to do in editing wise, I just remove the light. And pretty much the way I've done that was just using the clone tool. Uh-huh. Yeah, need to move this window. There we go. Um, so yeah, the clone stamp tool, um, click on this image, really, really powerful tool. Like if you click option like here, option there, and then you just paint over 
the light and it's literally seamless. Obviously, you've got a paint area which is would suit it. Yeah. So let's say, for example, I've clicked option up there and put that down. That, that obviously that doesn't work. So, <laughs> so yeah, all around here and just paint out that light. Yeah, um, the clone stamp um, and the healing brush, they've come along like a long way in recent years. Like yeah. just doing this now, especially doing it live and it's just working flawlessly. Um, it. Used to be a time where, where it was always a bit of a trial and error and a bit of experiment. You know, is this going to work or whatever? Um, and look at this, just happily flying through. Yeah, and just like that, that's, that's disappeared sort of thing. And uh, I don't know if that's a bit, I'll remove that. Yeah, it's just as easy as that. Like, it's really, really, I love that tool. Um, mm. And you, you'll see in my, um, later on when I show like editing in like my London stuff, like I don't necessarily use the clone stamp tool, but like with London, like the chewing gum on the streets is, is absolutely ridiculous. So Definitely. I'm always going through like removing all the chewing gum and like all that <laughs> sort of stuff. So yeah, you'll, you'll see how. Yeah, the... Really uh... When you see the gum on the streets, um, I remember when I was younger and, and realizing what that was, because you, you're kind of oblivious to it until you notice it. And um, yeah. I asked my parents, like, what's all this? And they're like, it's chewing gum. I was like, ugh, it's gross. Um, it's noticeable when you uh, you go other places around the world and that doesn't exist. And uh, you realize yeah, some got... places in the world are so clean. Like, yeah. One place I've been to is Singapore and it I is I knew spotless. someone's going to mention that. <laughs> spotless. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, so yeah, with, with this bit, I could go and clone Sampa as well. Um, but I'm just going to try to show you guys the content of Wear Tool, which is like a, another really powerful tool. Um, where are we at? Content Wear. So, some it is very powerful, but obviously, sometimes it is a little bit like hiccupy, so mm -hmm. you might have to clean it up. But, um, so, yeah, just drag around up to edit and content aware. And you can like see over here where it's just completely taking it away, and then hit apply, and hopefully that's that's pretty good. Looks pretty good to me. Nice. Um, yeah, really nice. And then there's a there's a little patch there. Like I say, I might go and clean that up. Um, but yeah, that's, that's as easy as that sort of thing. We uh, got rid of the light just like that. Nice. Oh, yeah, that's, that's come out yeah. pretty seamless. Yeah, that's it. But if I, and. For this we will go ahead and carry on but for, usually when i'm like fully happy with the image like i'll just bring these two and just like merge them down uh not even that i don't want that merge layers and then um that's my clean slate sort of thing um which i'm happy with nice so there's a, the, a um, question in the chat actually um go for it. do you think a, a green screen would have been easier than a, a clone scam Clone stamp. Have you ever used a green screen for this type of stuff before? Um, I've worked with green, screen, green screens before, um, and I think maybe if you let yourself like naturally to make yourself look like you're in a natural environment. Um, mm -hmm. I think the only pro of doing it out here is obviously the lighting conditions is matching the subject. So, mm. whereas if you've done it green screen, you'd need to like edit like the ground the sky to like match the subject just to keep it looking natural but i think definitely a green screen could have could have helped um yep. yeah for sure uh, uh so yeah i think next uh, I'm trying to think of the way i've done it i don't know if i've done sky or no we've done the eclipse i think okay so i'm going to show you that ring of light um that i tried to do but it just didn't work out so i'll just use this tool um eclipse tool fill i put nothing the stroke i put white just make that pure white and then we'll we'll adjust the size of it but i literally just drew <laughs> this and it kind of made me think like before i put all that time like trying to think of that idea and trying to do that mm -hmm. uh, just how easy it is to do on photoshop it's just yeah it's yeah and then i just um well, I mean, top marks were always trying it in the camera because um, yeah, that's, you know, that's that's one of those things where so easily we can just say, oh, I'll, just, I'll fix it in post or I'll do it in post. And then you realize yeah, when you, it. Get, you get to Photoshop and, and you think, oh, you know what? If I had have just put a bit of effort in in the camera, it would have saved me so much time. For sure, yeah. 
Um, okay, so yeah, yeah um, so we've got our sort of ring um, with the layer of here. I'll just double, double click on that and I'll just put like a glow on it. Uh, where are we at? Outer glow, outer glow. Inner glow, there it is. And obviously, that's just absolutely not what we want. So, pass it, bring that down. Spread over there. I guess one of the other things as well is um, taking the time to, to recreate this from scratch. There's probably, at the time you originally made this, a lot of uh, experiments and sort of happy accidents that happened. And uh, depending yeah. on how it goes today, you may come across a new happy accident and, uh, you know, different direction on things. Oh, 100%. Yeah, it's just like I'm, I'm doing this, I'm thinking like, how did I, did I not feather it? Or But then I think I know the way how I've done it. Um, I actually maybe have increased this to... A bit thicker, I think. And I think one thing with me in Photoshop is that I'm not like a full on expert, like I know every single where everything is. I just kind of make things work. So, yeah, all I've done with this is I've pretty much just done a mask on it. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then I just um, increase the brush. And I'm pretty sure there'll be someone who can tell me there's a quicker way of doing it, but that's how I've done it. Increase the brush. Uh, hardness all the way down, and then I just went, I went around itself. Yeah, I mean, doing it this way, you can, uh, you know, potentially get a less refined approach, which would actually probably look more natural in terms of, you know, this supernatural uh, exactly, concept yeah. that you're going for. And yeah, definitely. So I'll just drag around this quickly. I oh, know it did take a while for me to get this looking exactly how I wanted. Mm -hmm. Just a quick rough dot, rough one for you. Have you ever um, used things like a, a Wacom tablet or a, a pen based input? No, but I've I have looked at them before beforehand, sort of thing. Um, mm. And in this instance, I'm pretty sure that would <laughs> really like help help out probably. But, um, yeah, I mean, right, I'm they... not. I'm, I'm Sometimes I'm actually going to do that. I'm just going to take this one. And just shut. <laughs> yeah, uh, fair enough. Really, really. You guys get the idea. It did take me a while to get that looking how I wanted to be fair. Okay, let's put that there. So yeah, so, sorry. What was you going to say? Uh, yeah, so with the uh, the pen based interface, um, it's something that I I've like come and gone with on enjoying and not getting along with um it's been a while since i've i've used a wacom tablet but i used to really enjoy it for things like this especially with masking and just doing um even in lightroom doing uh edits going through all the the sliders and everything i there was a time when i found it so much easier using a pen um right but i don't really know what happened and why i fell out of love with it um but just seeing doing that then i was like oh no if i did have my tablet i would have probably got the pen involved yeah definitely that that would have definitely helped there yeah for sure um, so yeah, we've got the ring, so I've got our ring of light there. Um, obviously, it's I'm in front of it at the moment, so we will we'll master out later. But I think the next next stage I went with is doing the scar replacement. Mm -hmm. And again, this is like a really powerful tool that Photoshop have like brung in like over the past few years. Um, well, actually, I think this one was this year. They, uh, they might yep. bring this in. Um, so yeah, li literally just up to edit. Um, Scar little files. Where are we? Oh, see what I mean? I can't see it. I can't find it. Where? You know what? I have personally still not used the uh, the sky replacement. Um, I've seen people use it, and it's it's definitely like incredibly powerful. Um, I think I'm being blind here. Uh, here, this is a great opportunity to actually helps. share one of my. Yeah, we go. Sky replacement. One of my favorite power tips. Um, is using the uh, the help menu on the Mac. Um, I don't even know, you know. <laughs> Image. Am I being blind? Is it? Are you you're in Photoshop twenty twenty one, right? Uh, yeah, Photoshop twenty twenty one or oh, twenty twenty. Is this? That could be why then. Ah, uh, that would be why. Yeah, your your Lightroom has opened it up. 
Right, got you. Should I open up in the old 2020? Uh, if you do, you can just do a save and uh, and then reopen yeah. in 2021 if you've got that installed. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, from Lightroom preferences, uh, you got the ability to change the default editor. I imagine what might have happened previously is um, you've opened it via Finder rather than Lightroom, maybe. Got you. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. No worries. I mean, this happens. <laughs> this is live. This is what happens all the time. Uh, but uh, yeah, the um, the latest 2021, which I think came out in, uh, I want to say October time. Um, and there's been a couple of updates since. I've actually found that the, the latest version of Photoshop is rapid. It's, uh, I guess there's been a lot that's happening under the hood with the, the iPad sort of integration on things. Um, and I'm now using a M1 Mac and it's, it's so smooth on my Mac. It's yeah. unbelievable yeah. in terms of like scaling up layers and, um, just doing all sorts of adjustments all at once. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys have all, you know, discovered that it's super smooth, but Photoshop right now, um, I don't know, it, it feels like it's in a really good place. Definitely. Yeah. And they're always bringing out like these new, like ways to edit images and tools and it's mm -hmm. so refreshing because you can put like loads of trust into Adobe like that they're always going to be like improving which is, is really great okay so edit. boom there it is guys there Star it is replacement. yeah you were there the first first time <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> cool so yeah sky replacement like again incredible tool um I told you guys that I do a lot of real estate so like um, real estate, like video and photo sort of thing. So w this really helps with England and our rubbish weather. Yeah. Um, you can just take out a grey sky so easy. But uh, obviously that looks completely unnatural. So I'm not going to use blue skies. But these are actually w the ones that come inside the sky replacement. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and again, uh, where are we at? Sunsets. Well, this turned good because I don't know where the uh, <laughs> where the night sky one is spectacular. Oh, well, okay, we should import, we should import our own. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, this um, uh, the sky replacement uh, obviously working with images. But could you imagine if uh, if we got that for video at some point? You know, you're saying about yeah. doing. Oh real estate said, videos yeah, and sure. things like that um we got the, the video that'd be absolutely amazing yeah power of technology always growing always advancing i've just got to find a uh, sky uh, there's a question in the chat if the mac search also points out the tool uh yes it does so when you search in the the help option uh and then when you hover over the tool you'll get this um it's a non-condescending arrow that just says, here it is, here's the tool, <laughs> this is the one you're looking for. Um, so yeah, the uh, the help tool is is definitely very useful. It's a shame it's, it doesn't exist on Windows, um, but it's built into the OS um, directly on Mac. So yeah, it's a huge benefit if you've lost where the tool is or anything like that. Yeah, I don't know where Sky's gone, I'm afraid, which is, uh, again, not what you want to hear. Uh, usually, there was a there was a sky one and um, a night sky like sort of star one, like sort of in here, but uh, it's not there well, now. So, do you want to copy it over from the uh, the previous one? Yeah, we can, uh, layer from that, and we can build up from there. Uh, file opens desktop. That one. Well done, sir. I guess we can go um, if he had it on. Was it in Lightroom? Was the PSD saved externally? Uh, yeah, just just it's it. yeah. I'll just, I'll just bring this one in. Okay. Oh, that's not the one. Norm.
just uh, seeing in the chat, um, interesting on uh, how we're going to get to matching the foreground color with the background. Uh, that's definitely something I'm going to be interested in seeing how how everything kind of comes together um, and matching completely you know, different scenery um, and oh, there's this guy one there. So yeah, this is a sky one there. I think because it's not kind of going the way I, I plan with this, I think I'm just going to run through here how yep, I um, no sort of edited it. If that's if that's cool with you, yeah, that's all good. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we can we can take it back with the sky with a sky replacement when you edit it. Um, actually, we'll, we'll go back to this one just to show you an example, just from that question. Um, sky replacement. So initially it was sky place to however you like so with this one let's just go a little bit let's go like that it will actually the foreground it will do it for you which is really really um again useful uh, nice yeah and here foreground and you can see it's already put its own settings in there and to be fair looking at that that doesn't look too bad to be fair from um but you can go in there and just adjust it if you wanted mm -hmm. um Again, I, I would probably do the way I've done it. I've done it quite minimal, and then I just edit it myself, sort of thing. But um, yeah. yeah, really, really powerful. And then when you're replacing the sky, you can move the sky around. So this is obviously you, you wouldn't want that because that looks completely unnatural. So yeah, you pull it down to there, and you can even you can even like scale it up. Oh, nice! Yeah, uh, to look like look like that. But again, it's a little bit unnatural. Yeah, it's and, a very um, sci-fi thing to to bring the sky in much closer um you see that in movies all the time especially yeah. with planets and you know the planets are closer in proximity and you're like whoa it's a giant giant thing it, right yeah. in the sky um, um and yeah in there so you've got also like you can shift the edge of it so you can like, blend it more of your image so if you reduce it a little bit it'll sort of blend into the original sky a bit more mm -hmm. um and again the same with the fade so if you've done no fade it'll be proper harsh on these sort of like Oh, yeah. joining bit there so yeah it's, it's cool and usually when i bring the skies and always like to brighten them up because i think it just makes it pop a bit more mm -hmm. so yeah that's um that's cool so i'm just going to run you through how we went about let's give it a run. doing this just seeing that uh that previous sky <laughs> yeah that's quite a contrast isn't it you realize just how gray and and dull y yeah it can exactly be. that's it yeah um Okay, so yeah, we had this. This is this sky replacement I had, and I went with sort of thing. Um, and like I said, I adjusted it to the image. Um, and I don't think I actually done a lot of color adjustment on the foreground, like I said, because I actually done it, done it myself. I just color changed it here. Mm -hmm. And the way I done that is just went to layer, um, image adjustments, and the hue. I just went through and just adjusted it how I liked. So. You can, and I just, just cooled it off pretty much a little bit because I thought it was a little bit too warm. Uh, so yeah, at, so on the other one we had our ring, which is here. And then the next part of the image I've done was I put in the moon. So I had sort of an end point to aim for with the rope because mm -hmm. obviously I, I didn't actually have a full on rope on me. Um, so with the moon, I'll, actually, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll import the moon into this one to show you how I blended it into the image. Um, so were you, were you holding the rope in the original shot? I'm not sure I noticed yes. that. I was, yeah. holding okay. a, I was holding the rope like that long. And then right. I just it quite a, it all, all the quite a heavy the rope then? How did it not flop down? I had, I actually made it. I had like a, 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 like a wooden stick about that long. And then right. I just wrapped the rope around it to make oh, it look like... It was like sort of sturdy sort of thing. Mm, like a sort of cabled, like multi-threaded. Yeah, nice. Yeah, that's it, yeah. Probably somewhere in here, but... So yeah, this is um, how I've done the moon sort of thing. So I've just scared it up a slight bit. And then, obviously, we only want the moon, so I just... Just layer. And then delete that layer. So we've just got the moon here. Um, so yeah, so to remove the blue, I, I, all I went into select, uh, color range, and then just with this like pen drop, eye dropper thing, it just click the blue and you see how it just selects the blue there. 
Yeah, uh, nice. Fuzz, you do the fuzziness a bit, just maybe blends it a little bit more. But usually, straight off the bat, that's okay. I clicked okay. Uh, select the mask. Uh, invert that. So then, all the, all the stuff that's going to cut out is in red. So I just do that to new layer. And then boom, it's, 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 it's there. Obviously, there's a little bit there, but I'll um, I'll just tidy that up. So I'll go into the mask, uh, get the brush, paint with black. And we'll just brush out that inconsistent bit there on the edge. And then I noticed when I edited, um, you can still see the bit of the blue there. Um, again, I think if you've done the color range and like went in there, when you was masking and you went on the, in there like a bit more detail, mm -hmm. you could probably remove that. But I just thought if I just lose the saturation of that, it'll blend into the moon. So I just yep. image adjustment, hue saturation, and pull the saturation straight out. And I think nice. I've done a pretty much good enough job for me. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, um, I just rotated it around, and then eventually I placed it. Placed it there. So I'll show you how I went about maybe adding the glow to it. Mm -hmm. So so we've gone out there. Um, and again, yeah, I'll show, I'll show you a bit more. Just uh, double click this, and like earlier, it was a outer glow, which actually, because there's that's still the image. So if you just click, to just convert to smart object, then double click. Um, not glow. Oh, it's still there. <laughs> you might need to rasterize it rather yeah, that's than the one. smart objects. Yeah. And double click it now. Out of glow. Okay. Or, obviously, that's. I think there there could be a, a slight transparency in the in the mask, um, which okay, is making it appear cool. as though it's a, a larger shape than it actually is. So let me show you a way I would go around that. Because I would, I would just move on to a new thing. I'd uh, get, make a new layer underneath it. <laughs> uh, use the brush tool. Go up here and click white. Uh, hardness at zero percent, and I'd actually lose the opacity to around maybe fifty-ish. And then I'd, I would literally just place that there. And drag it. Where's which one's the moon? That's the moon. Oh wait, that was on the uh, that was on the moon layer. My bad. Okay, that's the moon. That's uh, okay. I'll just place that behind it. Lose that, and just scale it up to give the moon its own sort of glow, sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and before I done the. The moon, uh, it's, it's already edited here, so you can notice how there's no stars there. Yeah. Uh, just to keep keep the like the image looking natural, I, I um I did go ahead and remove the stars behind there. Yeah. Uh, because obviously, technically the, the moon, moon is still there. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> it's still there. So the way I've done that is I just used, used a spot healing brush on. Just there a question in the chat and... if uh, if you were going to remove the stars. Um. So yeah, definitely addressing oh. that. Cool. Yeah, yeah. And I literally just went through that because I have seen a lot of people put moons in their photos and they actually do forget to, put the, um, to remove the stars. Yeah. And they, they, they think just for one night there's only half a moon there. So it's just a, a little hanging basket. It, you know, grows over yeah. 30 days and resets. <laughs> I mean, also, technically, you're you're not obviously going to be able to pull the moon down with a piece of rope. So, you know, well, sci fi no, rules I don't, I don't involved. So. Yeah, true. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, so once I had my ring at the moon and I had it in position to take the rope, the rope, the rope up there, I literally just zoomed in on the rope. I cut it out and created a new layer from it, and then just kept, kept duplicating it yep. um, all the way up to the moon and rope top off. And I just made sure to I've well, moved the uh, the ring of light. As I mentioned in chat, it's, uh, it's similar to when people have clouds that shine through behind the moon as well. Yeah, that's it, literally. <laughs> so 
so yeah, I think that was pretty simple with the ropes going up there. And then with this, like I probably could have blended it into being a bit more blurred to be a bit more natural, but I thought, I thought it was going on Instagram, so it'll compress it anyway. So um, yeah, so I pretty much just got the content aware tool again. Uh, mm -hmm. Sorry, no, the um, clone stamp, sorry, on the rope top off. And I just literally got this point and then just brushed it in there and then brushed it in there to make it look like it was wrapped around the moon. So yeah, that's nice, nice and easy. And then the image itself, it's pretty, it's pretty much there and I was quite happy with it. And then, but I thought it could just have that bit more pop. So I decided this ring of light would obviously have like a, like a cast of light going down. So I just added in like a, again, I just made a massive brush. I shall show you. Like I said, like it's, to me, it's really, really just simple stuff. Um, hardness down there. This is one of the things yeah. I love about um, kind of creativity and just art in general is everything is just all about layers. Everything is just building things up. Literally, yeah. So the, the more that you add to things um, on all levels, whether it's like spoken word and narrative, like just layers and depth to things and when it comes to filmmaking, you're, you know, you're set out a bed of something and it at first draft looks really boring. But when you when you start adding in those layers and just extra little details, everything builds up and it's all those like little sprinkles of glitter and dust that um, exactly, yeah. build it together, it's, right? It's like what goes into making a cake sort of thing. So mm. it all just um all just brings it together nicely. Definitely. Um, yeah. So yeah, with this I just uh, went in and masked around. Again, brush the black tool. Just went in and took out the bits on top. And I made sort of a funnel going into me. Uh, just like that. Again, that pen would be... You've got me thinking of that now. Yeah. <laughs> that pen would be really nice now. Um, so yeah, that funnel. And then all it was simply just lowered the opacity. Then that was in there. And then also... I don't know if it made him a bit more natural or not, but I wanted myself to pop. So I actually went in and deleted some of the, um, some of that light on myself. So I clicked X. So this changes to white mm -hmm. and you can just, it brings me, uh, bring that up to hundred. Oh, no, it's black. Sorry. Yeah. Um, and just painted around me so that I popped out more. And again, this is just rough to show you. When you uh, when you originally created this, I know we're we're kind of speed running through this uh, for yeah. the live. When you originally created it, how much how much time did it take to uh, to work on this? Are you spending a lot of time? Yeah, this took me around two and a half hours, I think, okay. to edit. Yeah, which um. I think it was like a decent amount for what it is. And again, there's, there's little details and I didn't really have a pure vision on how I was going to edit. It, so it just kept on like changing as I went. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, again, that, that, that's that. So that's how that looked. And then and to be honest, the image is pretty much there. I just wanted to add like a bit more focus into the middle. So I added on some what I call focus shading. So it's just a slight bit of shadowing on the sides, yep. I don't know if you guys can see that. Um, yeah. Yeah. The, the, the ground shadow as well, which just adds into that sort of light of halo just there. And then lastly, I just wanted to adjust the light on myself. Uh, just bumps it up a bit. And that's that's the finished product there. Nice, sort of yeah, that, um, that added sort of, almost like a vignette, I guess, just really sort of pulls it together and, and sort that's of brings in, brings in the light on things. Uh, and like you said, you you know the intention was to share this on Instagram, and uh, that's one of the beauties of playing to the platform is it's on a smaller device, and you can much the same way with uh, filmmaking in the old days. It's all smoke and mirrors, and you know you, you're not going to be analyzing frame by frame because it's on a, a smaller system or whatever. So yeah, yeah that, that sure. definitely yeah. works on this. That's it. So yeah, that's um, that's my. Adobe and Destination Imagination edited done. So do you want to like jump into some sort of street stuff and 
Yeah, maybe definitely. Some people, maybe people have some questions about that sort of thing. I'm just wondering, actually, with this um, with this image concept you got here, what uh, what further ones do you think you might you might work on next? And is there anything from this that you would um, change and do differently on future ones? Um, good question. Um, I don't know what I'd be working on next or any campaigns I have got coming up, but I I think I'll try to push myself again more. Mm -hmm. in maybe shooting and editing um mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a firm believer in you've always got to learn and try new things otherwise you don't improve sort of thing so yeah definitely this this was definitely a, a learning curve for me because this is this whole image bringing it to life i haven't ever done anything like that before to be fair yeah so yeah just just i'll, I'll try and push myself out the boundary boundaries sort of bit more yeah so, no i think uh, i think it's a great start of, i mean if this was your your first attempt doing this type of stuff, then brilliant. It's yeah, it's great. Um, I think one of the uh, one of the things that's always really interesting with this type of work is uh, when it comes to analyzing light and you know, um, like in the way that you brought in the light from the original image to enhance it and add to it. Um, so yeah, using using your eyes to to say, hmm, where's the light going to be, and how can I work with that? I think that's. It's definitely a, a fun concept to play around with yeah, in future definitely. ones. It's just just planning the image sort of thing. Yeah. Mm. And I think that's one thing I would recommend with like like if you used to do an image like this again, like really just plan it and think over it to like how you can make it like look its best and easiest yeah. way to look its best sort of thing. Even with like little things like when it comes to me doing the rope, instead of like holding like a rope that's gonna dangle and everything, I thought, no, it needs to be straight. Yep. So just like little touches like that, which uh, yeah came out really good so yeah definitely maybe next time you can actually hook on to the moon uh when the moon's in its only half basket phase and um, yeah. get a long that's enough it. rope it'll work right yeah that's <laughs> it that's it that's it sell it um okay cool so uh let's go to like a recent probably my first time being in london for ages um and if anyone wants to like ask any questions about like gear or like what i recommend plus true photography like hit me <laughs> there was there was actually a question just came in what iso were you using on that uh previous image in the field uh, let's have a look let's have a look um i think that was one thing with it i didn't want to bring in too much iso because i i knew i didn't want it to be like really grainy mm -hmm. so iso that was 400 that one okay that and was 426 mil f4 i yeah. think it was 115th so quite a slow shutter but because it was on a tripod it's it was okay mm. so 26 mil is that using a like a 24 to 70 lens or something that's it yeah it's quite a yep. precise mi millage isn't it so mm. yeah it's yeah. on the 24 to 70 um, nice. i probably meant to get that to 24 but probably just a two mil off sort of thing yeah um, i love the 24 to 70 is it's the perfect range for me um i'm never too much of a fan of ultra wide so 24 is about as wide as i i enjoy going um, right okay and then all the way up to 70 mil is is like a pretty much everyday range um covers all my bases pretty much yeah that's it that's that's what i say with the lens it's just like it's one lens for all and that pretty much serves in most areas sort of thing you mm. can get your ultra wide with it and but you can also shoot like killer portraits with like mm -hmm. 24 to 70. is that the um, the canon one you're using or sigma yeah or? canon one for that yeah 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 nice. but um but yeah, I've got all sorts of lenses, sort of thing. Um, did like like this sort of shot. This was shot on the Sigma twenty mil. Uh, okay. And what's nice about that is it goes down to one point four, and there's not many mm. twenty mils out there at one point four. So you still get that sort of nice shallow depth of field with a wide lens, mm -hmm. which is uh yeah, it's cool. There's a there's a question that's coming actually, um, which is something that's interesting to hear from everyone's perspective. Uh, what camera would you recommend uh, to a person that's new to photography? Okay. Um, camera I'd recommend, it depends on what path you want to go. I started with a Nikon D5500 and mm -hmm. I switched over to Canon because I just like the Canon colors, the Canon, the whole menu system, which was annoying because obviously Nikon lenses, then you have to find a whole new set of lenses. So I think any camera, that, I'm going to say Canon because I'm Canon biased, but like mm -hmm. any like a Canon 800D or some, something like that, it's um, 
perfect. You've got megapixels there, and because I'm photo and video orientated, I think that camera does. I'm, I'm sure it does 1080 60 for sure. Mm -hmm. It might even do 4K. Um, but I think if you're photo and video orientated, the way the industry is moving, I think a beginner camera you should be looking at something that does have 4K. It's not essential, but to, to sort of keep with the industry and move with it, I think you should be picking up something that can shoot 4K. But most, there's a lot of beginner like DSLRs and mirrorless out there that do shoot 4K now. So, but yeah, like a Canon 800D sort of thing um, or AED or, yeah, that'd be a good, good camera to start off with. Yeah, definitely. No, I think they're, they're great, solid options. Um, and like you said, with 4K, it's, uh, it's definitely not a necessity, but you know, you, you would hope that you buy a camera to uh, to invest in for a number of years, um, yeah. and as things continue to go on, uh, it's just better to be closer to future proofing, even if you're not maximizing it right now, for sure. Yeah, got you. Yeah, yes, exactly. Um, so yeah, uh, pretty much. I haven't even really looked through these images properly, but um, we'll go ahead and just edit this one just to show you my my sort of way I would edit images, sort of thing. Um, so just picking out my favourite one there, it's probably none of them because there's a reflection right there <laughs> of some guy standing, but we'll work with it. Is uh, this a car that you just found parked? Like yes, yeah, that, was, that was just parked there, so I just snapped it. <laughs> I, I have to say, yeah. it's terrible parking. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. <laughs> so you may be able to Photoshop those lines out. <laughs> yeah, so pretty much um, with my street stuff, I try to bring the shadows and the highlights to like a middle foreground so I have like a clean slate and then I go in and then put my touch on it so here I would just pull the highlights back a tad and then lift the shadows a bit and then just counteract that with a little bit of contrast and, and I'll just start with that as I just think I can put my more my touch on it a bit better mm -hmm. um, and again I always take always take these to just correct the little bit of distortion on the lens. Um, so yeah, sweet. Yeah, that goes a great way to just balancing it back to um, closer to reality, really, doesn't it? Yeah, that's it. Um, yeah, so then I, I love, I'm a lover for the tone curve. Um, so we'll just keep the highlights there so it doesn't increase. I'm going to lift the shadows a little bit more and then bring the blacks down just a tad. So it's like, it's not an S curve, but it's a slight S curve. So it just makes it pop that little bit more. And then I like to start painting in my own sort of shadows to like like direct the, the viewer's attention in the image. So we've got a car and London eyes. So that's, that's the main subject of this photo. So first, let's just crop this to a four by five. If we're posting on Instagram, I like to put the subjects on these, these lines on the thirds. So mm -hmm. I'm actually going to bring that a little, a little bit closer. You hit it bang on there with the uh, the headlight and the center point for the eye. Yeah, that's uh, let's go for that. I think that looks a little bit uh, a bit more over. Minute adjustments. Yeah, there we go. And it's got, sort of working better now. So obviously, it's, there's no distractions like up down here. No one needs to see that. On the top of trees and it's nothing so there we go cool um so i'm going to bring in a graduated filter and just kind of remove this sort of distraction i'm going to bring like my own sort of shadow so just bring that down bring that do we know what type of car this is actually uh, i can't quite no see the not a clue, to be fair. I just, um, I thought, to be fair, I thought, hmm, that's part there. That's got to be special. So I just took a photo of it. Yeah. I <laughs> but, mean, this, uh, um, this is really going to show our age if, uh, if we're is there anyone? unable yeah. to spot it. Cause this clearly looks like a sixties sort of vibe on things. If there's anyone in the chat that could tell us what it is, I'm, I'm going to guess and say it's a Hillman. <laughs> I'm sure on the model. No, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, so yeah, cool. Uh, I'm just going to bring the shadows down a bit more. So I, I do like contrast in my images. Um, that's really winding me up the legs, but I will. 
Uh, okay, cool. So I think usually I would take out this color here and I'd, I'd do that by doing a yellow, but I'm going to take a first guess and say the green and the color come out. So yeah, so it does. So something like that would be like Photoshop. I'd probably actually remove that sign itself. Mm -hmm. um, how I'd do that is I would use like the clone tool, which I showed you guys with that light sand. I'd probably nick this half up here and then paint over that there mm -hmm. and then that, that, remove that sort of thing. Would you, would you use the clone tool in Lightroom itself or would you prefer to use it in Photoshop? I think that the clone tool in Photoshop's more powerful. Um, I can show you this one. Um, let's say if we just, I think this is more catered to like easier sort of like spots stuff. and things. Yeah. Yeah. Hold on. My computer's just lagging a bit. So maybe drag that up there. It might. It's just. It's, it's just not there for me, sort of thing. I'd, um, yeah, you just you can tell like, it's going to be a lot more work, isn't it? But for stuff like like I was saying earlier, like the chewing gum on the floor of London, um, mm -hmm. perfect. Um, you know, st stuff like all of this stuff, we can I'll clean that up definitely mm -hmm. with the clone tool in the Lightroom, especially like that. Um, so yeah, we've got the graduated filter in there, which just like just removes that brightness there, and then. It's, it's a weird, I don't know how I started editing like this, but I like to like put a sort of like um, a pump of light into the image. Okay. So, um, so I'd, I'd increase the, the brush size like this and literally just tap once. And then I just bring, I, I don't know why, it's just, it's just my style. And I don't, mm -hmm. I just add this sort of like. Oh, it's connecting with the moon. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> just add a pump a lot there and we're pretty much well on our way to being like where I want it to be but where you really I think you bring an image to life is in the color grading mm -hmm. so again this is my style and I don't know why I've got these numbers but it's just worth me and the hue always for the shadows I go to 214 and then I just bring that up a tad and I'll show you my guys Instagram page off this and you probably see so you got a very uh, yeah. consistent approach. That's it, and just like that, it's, it's instantly changed through that color, um, mm -hmm. color grade in there. And then I always like to put uh, a little bit of warmth into the highlights as well. So the hue I'll go forty four. And I think with the color grade, if you have those specific numbers, I think that really helps in keeping consistency through throughout like the Instagram grid. Um, if you go too much. It, doesn't look good at all. Just a little bit of that. And straight away, I was looking towards my sort of color wise. You can, definitely not there. Just balancing out the colors here. Again, London, very gray yeah. image. So uh, having to That's pump it. in, pump in the colors and, and add your touch on things. That's it. Yeah. So, so yeah, that's pretty much, um, the image there itself i think i'll go in and add a bit more contrast and i might even reduce this shadow a bit and add in some shadow to the tree mm -hmm. just uh just because i really like to direct the viewers attention to if you click down in it shows up there you go to the image itself so this won't be a lot but just the tiniest of bits just keeps this bit and this bit bright Okay, we've got that, and then I might reduce that a bit. And this, bring it down. And sometimes on the floor, I like to see how the clarity looks on the floor. But, uh, just sharpens it a bit more, and then we'll bring that down too. There's a, uh, a question in the chat from Sean asking if, um, uh, if the verticals on the light pole to the left uh, if that concerns you at all, or if you're you're happy with the sort of wide angle approach and things. Yeah, so I think before the lens crunch, that's probably even worse. To be fair, um, yeah, it's really quite bends there. I think you could you could go in and potentially fix fix it a little bit more. Um, but I think because I'm on a wide angle, I don't know why. Because I'm on a wide angle anyway, I'm, I'm not really going to 
be able to like miss that. So mm-hmm. I think for for this one, it's okay. Yeah. Um, I have got another wide angle, which is like a 12 mil. Um, it's a lower 12 mil and it's like a zero d- distortion oh, nice. lens. Yeah. And that's the one I use for my real estate. And because that's obviously my paid work, mm-hmm. like the verticals in there, like they have to be straight. Otherwise yep. the house looks like, doesn't look like what it is. But mm. for this, it, it's okay for me. Um, so yeah, yeah, but yeah, like for paid work, I'd definitely be um, fixing that sort of thing. I was trying to distort it, but... That lens must be a, a dream for, for real estate stuff. I mean, that's been one of the biggest plagues of like real estate photography is super wide angle lens, distorting everything, not showing a fair representation. And then this zero distortion lens comes about seemingly yeah, out of nowhere. Yeah. Um, I've, I don't own one, but I've uh, I've seen them and, and tried a couple of them and they're, they're pretty special. I think they, is it, you yeah. said it was 12 mil that you've got? Yeah, I've got um, 12 mil, yeah. That's I think it. there's an eight millimeter version of something as well. Not quite a full zero distortion, but, um, and then they've also got that super long macro lens. I don't know if you've seen that, the probe. Oh, the probe, the 24 mil one, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that is a very special lens. I'd love to get my hands on that. Yeah, definitely. There's a lot of interesting content on YouTube about it. Um, it's one of those things, that it, it's a bit of a, a novelty, and if you overuse it, you can quickly ruin the uh, ruin the novelty on it, but using it in the right environments for the right task just elevates everything. Um, a lot of fun you can have with, uh, I guess, Definitely. just physics, really, isn't it? Optics. So, and that lens has actually got an LED on the end of it, so mm. you can put it into like dark spaces and it lights it and everything for you. Oh, it's, it's killer. It's just such I think a different the, um, perspective. The, the tip of it is waterproof as well. So I've seen yeah, it dropped it. into, you know, cups of water and stuff. Um, yeah, crazy optics. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, man. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much there. Um, again, I would, let's go into, let me just show you the clone stamp on this as well. So, so it does work. Let's just oh, tap that. We've got some uh, confirmations of the car in the chat. Uh, so a Have Hillman we? Minx, olive green with a white roof, circa 1959. Um, nice. So thanks, Angus, for that. Um, he's also clarifying before his time. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm impressed with that. That's wicked. Yeah. Hillman Minx. Yeah, there was actually quite a few like old classics parked all along here. To be fair, was this on a um, maybe on a Sunday? Maybe you know Sunday driver. It's definitely a classic car maybe, day, isn't it? Maybe. Yeah. I I don't have a clue. To be fair, but um, but yeah, they were right. To be fair, in my sort of. I'd rather see a lot of McLaren there and take a photo of that, to be fair. Um, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it was, it was cool. Um, so I'll, I'll, I won't go into any more on that, so you sort of get a style from that photo. Let me show you before and after sort of thing. So nice. you can see how that... And the way, I, the way I work, I try to just keep the adjustments minimal to an extent. Like, mm-hmm. obviously, there is a lot of, there is a lot of like, play there with like, the shadows and colours and everything. But I'll try and keep it minimal still. And I'll just show you guys my Instagram to see. Shameless plug. <laughs> um, no, that's great. It's um, it's it's nice to see a, a subtle approach to things. Um, interesting, it's such a contrast to you know, the first half where we're going through very sort of surreal imagery. Um, and then also when it comes to reality on things, it's you know keeping it subtle, keeping it uh, slight tweaks and whatever. Exactly, yeah. And I think... Now, all, all, honestly, I, I probably have only just started coming into finding my style with photography, mm-hmm. um, which I'm happy with. Um, I'll just scroll down here to show you guys, but you can see that typical light sort of really dark sort of like blues and the shadows and the highlights are like all sort of like that warm. Mm. Um, and yeah, like up, only up to recently where I've, I found that sort of style. But uh, you can see like when we've been traveling, like I went for the, like the vibrant colors and everything. And then before that, I didn't quite know where I was going. You see here is quite um, just showing the reds in the image. Here's like vibrant, vibrant mm-hmm. blue. But I, was, I was quite confused where I was going with like my sort of style. But um, I'm happy now. Like I sort of found my favorite sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, but yeah, it's, it's cool. Um, Constantly tweaking I'll, and evolving. Yeah, exactly. I'm sure it'll change in like a year or two again. So. <laughs> um, let's go ahead and edit another image let's just flick through these what's this <laughs> good old squirrels squirrels yeah squirrels in london are so friendly 
Uh, I've got quite a few relationships with squirrels in London, I swear. They uh, they seem to know me quite well. Um, all the royal parks especially. Uh, this is something that I've, I've documented many times on my blog about like 10 years ago or so. Um, just photos of squirrels and uh, we don't get too much wildlife in London, but it's it's a good opportunity no. to test out some long lenses. and. That's it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, this was what I was on about earlier with them. So this 20 mil is 1.4, so you can see you've got that really nice like blur on the background. Yeah, this is still at 24, um, a 20 uh, focal length. Mm. So which is so I was, to be fair, I was literally super close, yeah, really close to this squirrel, yeah, like super super close. And it didn't even move too fast. Mm. So yeah, I'm, I'm probably not going to edit that because I probably wouldn't post that. But I've got another car photo here, which is quite really nice because the red pops. Uh, one nicely so i might just go ahead and edit this one this one would be a good one to edit got some uh, better parking this time yeah that's it within the lines quite like that angle you can see the depth in the in the street as opposed to that so a bit too much mm. i'm so picky to be fair i'm not even happy with how i composed them but let's go let's go ahead and edit that so uh let's go and crop it four by five uh, we'll put it on the lower thirds are you often out shooting alone and during the whole day or do you how do you plan your your shoots um sometimes i'll go with someone uh just walk around for a couple of hours hours um different location each time mm -hmm. and just, just go around shooting um I have, I have been in london on my own before um, it's quite nice to just put some headphones in and just music and just yeah definitely just go around the city and just walk around. Um, so yeah, uh, let's go ahead and just do the lens corrections. Uh, what's it? It's almost twenty mil again. So the lines aren't too bad. There's a little bit of bending in there, um, tiny, tiny bit. But it isn't as bad as that pole. I think because that pole's on the right on the on the side of the frame, mm. obviously it distorted a bit. So again, I'm just gonna the highlights quite blown out here, so there's not much to save. I'll do. And we'll just lift the shadows a bit. Encounter a little bit of contrast. And I'm just gonna lift them a bit more. Do that again. I guess uh, this is a, a much easier car to identify, but yeah, you know, as it. with all Porsches, they they quite often look very similar. So, guess the model is <laughs> is the game for this one. Well, yeah, I, I wouldn't even know if you want a better look. Um, oh, actually, yeah, that's not what I thought at all. I was expecting it to be uh, an old one, but that uh, right. that's a far newer, yeah. newer version. No, it, it weren't weren't bad little car. Um, so yeah, I probably should be blaring that, but. Is what it is. Okay, so yeah, um, so I've got this image of how I'd work with. Um, again, I, I don't like the light in the foreground, so again, I will come in and put some shadow in there to really direct this, the focus onto the subject. And a good way of doing that is because there's pretty much just one subject in this frame. Just draw this mask. Uh, let's look at this and just feather it a bit more. And then if you just adjust this, just ever so slightly, it just edits the image around the center of the mask. So it instantly just directs your attention mm. straight onto the car, much better. Um, and with this one, I quite like it. It's got quite a lot of um, grit to this image. So I will add a little bit of clarity. Um, a lot of people are prone to putting a lot of clarity on their images. Mm. Um, and I would say, that the, the less less is more that's what i'm looking for so if, if we were to go ahead and do a lot I, I think you know it don't look too bad but i think it just looks too unnatural so yeah just a tiny bit i, I would never go above 10 to be fair um, seven maybe just gives it that yeah it's always one of those pop. things you can always scale it back um and uh quite often when i'm editing i'll I'll uh, do like a, an eye test on things, you know, I'll, I'll do my edit and I'll go away and have some lunch or 
um, Great you know, come back yeah. the next day and then look at it and think, oh, what was I doing? Or, you know, so things like clarity is, is usually one of those uh, sliders that you usually peel back just a little bit uh, before you yeah, call exactly. it a day. And yeah, I'm like yourself, I'll, I'll edit an image and um, I'll just, I won't upload it at all. And then mm -hmm. like, I'll come back in like a day or two and, and relook at it. Yeah. And usually that relook, you instantly see something and think, yeah, that needs to be changed. And then you just tweak it a bit and then it's, it's pretty much there. Um, yeah, I also, I'd really recommend that. Yeah. There's that new uh, texture slider um, in Lightroom. Have you played around yeah. with that much? Yeah, I've just added in a little bit there. Um, again, it's, it's a, texture's a tiny bit like clarity, which is why it's on, on top of it, but it's it's not as um, intense sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So let's if you slide it up really high, it, it looks like everything's like really sharp. Mm -hmm. um, whereas if I do the clarity you can see how it just really contrasts the image yeah yeah so the texture is a very nice tool to have uh in fact sometimes i use the texture instead of sharpening to make the mm -hmm. image look how i like um so yeah let's go i'll show you a little bit of texture there it just sharpens the image just ever so slightly and gives it that little bit yes. of pop. again with it i won't go too high with the texture it's like a mix of all things contrast sharpening grain all into one handy little slider um, yeah. with probably a little bit of AI to uh, uh, prevent it from overdoing certain areas and skin tones and things like that. Yeah, that's it. Um, okay, so yes, cool. So images kind of come, come to where I want it to be. I'm going to go into the color grader now. And again, my style, <laughs> I'll go for 214 in the shadows this is. I was in the highlights. 214. And it's going to look really nice because that red's, red's really going to pop. Um, don't want to push it too much. Let's just put it around 7 for now. And then the highlights just to counter around that shadows. We'll go 44. Probably should just type it in. <laughs> and then actually really light cast is looking now. Because it's all, it's all down there, sort of thing. So let's see if we balance them a bit more. I might just reduce that shadows a tiny bit, so it's about five maybe. And that's really that's really come along to look to my sort of style. So yeah, yeah, that's cool. Um, and then with this, I would bump up the reds just a little bit because that is the that is the main color in the image. And then just ever so slightly. And then I'm going to go and just check the yellows just in this brickwork. What part of London is this in? I'm trying to work it out. This is just off, um, it's just off the Thames, it's straight off the Thames. It's a, it feels opposite the London Eye. Oh, okay. Um, so Westminster area. Yeah, around that sort of area, yeah. It was just a street and actually I spotted it from a distance and I, what I spotted was just the red of the car. Mm -hmm. I thought, yeah, let's just, let's just go shoot that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. So yeah, I'm just going to bring in that the shadows what I said to you about. So obviously we've got that, that first shadow we've got to the whole image. And I'm just going to go in and I might actually put a, 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 a good amount of clarity on the ground here just to... Uh, okay. I'll just move that back a bit. So I do like clarity on the ground in the foreground. There. I'm just going to bring that down. And shadow. And I'll bring that down quite considerably. Too. And then move that back in. And then it's looking really cool now really happy with this. And I'm just going to erase the, the little bit of spill that goes onto the car from that mask. Mm -hmm. um, let's keep a nice feather on that. So that's really zoning in on the subject now. Um, see how much sort of effect that takes in. Mm. So, yeah, that's cool. Uh, that's, that's pretty much there again with the stuff like this i'll go through and just take it all out 
with this tool is that it's doing it. It's taking other bits from the image and replacing it. So sometimes you just have to adjust it a bit. Um, yeah, and with the uh, with the amount of chewing gum that's on the floor, it sometimes we'll just find another spot with chewing gum and replace it. it with that. So you're just swapping chewing gum for chewing gum. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's it. Different types. Yeah, um, different flavors. And then I don't, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know if you want me to um, with this. I don't, I don't like this gunk here. So I'd, I'd, I would probably go into Photoshop and steal this piece of the curb and like pull that all the way just to clean it off and again yeah. stuff like this. Um, do, you want, a, do you want me to do that or? Yeah, we can we can have a look at that and that might tie in nicely. Image? There's a, a question here of would sky replacement work on this image? Is that something you would ever consider or attempt? Let's, let's give it a go. Um, uh, I, I'm not sure what style would work best with this because it was a cloudy day. so putting a blue sky there might look a little bit unnatural but let's have a look maybe a uh, maybe a dark sort of sky might be mm. might work but um it'll be good to see how the sky replacement will work on this image because obviously there's only a little bit of sky sort of thing yeah let's go and have a look you got the right one this time Ugh, i haven't uh no i haven't what's um can you run me through how to uh, open it up? Yeah, let's let's do that. So if you go top left, Lightroom Classic, uh, and then Preferences. One second. Lightroom Classic, Preferences. Yeah. And then uh, you've got your editing. And there will be an external editing. Yeah. And you can change that to uh, any application of your choosing. Uh, so... Where have we got uh, da, 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 da. reset uh, application not specified? Okay, so go down. You see on the middle of the window to the right, we've got the choose icon. Yeah, yeah. You should be able to scroll through here, and in your applications, you can find Photoshop twenty twenty one. Cool, amazing. There we are. So I've learned something from there as well. Brilliant. <laughs> oh, hold on, and then uh, select the application top one. Yeah, yeah. There we go. And that should update now, so that when you open in uh, Photoshop, it should be Photoshop 2021. Yeah, it still says not spec specified, is that right? Yeah, I think that's fine. Uh, top left, it's okay. saying Adobe 21, so that's good. And then there we go. Uh, it's looking better. Yeah, so it's hopefully... Yeah, it's one of those things when, uh, as you install new versions of it, um, I quite often keep old versions of software just if I've got older projects that I don't want to convert to the new version, I'll open it. Um, but sometimes you do forget you'll install the new version and then you'll just go about your day and you haven't updated the apps in your dock and you realize, oh, I'm still using the old version and have been doing yeah, it for months. That's a, um, that happened with me of After Effects quite a lot, to be fair. Although this isn't really... Just open a new one. Little bit slow. I think this, this, the stream adds like a little bit of a. Yeah, I think it's it's likely the, um, screen sharing um, uses up a lot of the processing. Um, I think it should jump in in a second. Yeah, hopefully. No worries on that. <laughs> Is there any other questions or anything? Uh, yeah, there's a. Uh, other other people referencing with uh, multiple versions of After Effects. Um, that's definitely something that uh, I'm dealing with at the moment. Um, I'm interested to play with some of the new media replacement tools, which uh, I think I should be uh, presenting in a stream next week. Um, so going through that and utilizing previous versions of After Effects and, and some oh, of the cool. new things. Uh, so that's a lot of fun. Well, have that'd you, be um, I'll, um, I'll join on that one. That'll be good to watch. Yeah. Have you have you done yeah. a lot of After Effects stuff? Is that is that in your yeah? I, I, um, to an extent, I don't. Again, I wouldn't say I'm. Um, okay, um, I wouldn't say I'm an absolute pro in it. But again, I, I just make stuff work in there, um, mm -hmm. like with like trackings and all of that. And um, and I think when editing in Premiere Pro, I find After Effects just a stronger version. So any little adjustments I put on Premiere Pro, I. I just put onto After Effects and just render it back in Premiere Pro. Mm. I just a bit more trust in it, sort of thing. Yeah. Um, oh God knows what's going on there. I think, uh, it's... and especially with the After Effects, I think 
the speed ramping on After Effects is much better than Premiere Pro, in my opinion. It, um, mm -hmm. You've just got more room to play with, I think. Okay, a bit cool. more nuance so, and things, yeah. Yeah, okay, so um, let's go replace it. Let's have a look. Okay. Sky replacement. So let's save it automatically. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see how this affects some of the I mean, rest that, of the image. That don't look mm. too bad, to be fair. So, um, I think, if anything, I would pull it more there, keep it brighter. You see how it goes over the building a little bit, but we'll, we'll adjust that. Um, again, like everything, I'll just brighten it up a bit. Okay. Um, Shift edge a bit. Just adjust slightly. And then we'll see how it, um, maybe cool it off a bit. Just match. Yeah, the, and then let's see what it does to the foreground. It's, um, the color, you see what, you see what it does to the foreground. It, um, so, sort of that sort of teal look that I put to it kind of goes a little bit. Mm. Um, so I might not use it as much. Um, yeah, I'm going to take that color adjustment out of it. But we'll leave it there for now. It's cool. Yeah. Um, and again, you can always switch back. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's a wicked tool to have. Like, how easy is that? Usually, like, before that came out, you'd, you'd have to go around and mask and everything, and it wouldn't mm -hmm. be perfect. So. Okay, cool. So again, I'll just command J just to copy. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna steal this. Actually, I'm gonna clean up that part first, and then yep. I'm just gonna put it all the way across. So again, the clone stamp tool, my absolute favorite. Uh, just put that over there. Actually, I like this part of the curve as well. Just cleans it up ever so nicely. Like, oh, yeah, I love easy. it <laughs> so much better. Too yeah. easy. <laughs> so, uh, again, we're going to clean up this part here. Actually, I might. Okay, so we're going to go from this point here and we'll ignore this middle bit. We'll come back to that. Mm -hmm. Just run it all the way and then you can even go up there. Say if I carried on going, you'd see the car come into the image there. So that's what you have to be careful of. So we'll um, do it there and then we'll steal this part up. There. And then I'm just going to join these two. So we'll nick. There. And because it's not, um, it's not like a massive part of the image, so this is maybe it should, maybe it shouldn't, but it hasn't got to be perfect sort of thing. So. I'm going to get that. I'm actually going to start lower just so it's a bit more natural. It's interesting as well. The, the more you zoom in on these things, the more you find yourself replacing little, tiny little bits. And then when you zoom out, you think, yeah, did definitely. I need to do that? <laughs> definitely, yeah. That's it. You start I'm getting distracted by individual pixels. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And then just because the curves are obviously smaller here and bigger there, so it's got to match that. But, but instantly that's just looking when you zoom out. Yeah. And, and it's little things like that that I really tried to do in my images just to really clean them up. Mm -hmm. So, um, oh, my airports, wait, they're pretty low. That no, should be good. Uh, so let's just go ahead and fix all of it real quickly. Like that, so easy. And just little distraction, distractments in those lights sort of in the road. And I think this uh, this was shot on the on the R6, what I've recently picked up, and mm -hmm. I think that's twenty point one megapixels or something. Yep. So. I actually find I actually find the twenty point one meg pickles is like plenty sort of thing. A lot mm -hmm. of people are really really um, catered to thinking the more megapixel count the better the camera. But I think unless you're 
putting like uh, these images on massive billboards, I don't think it's too much of an issue. Um, yep. Like a little bit of a low megapixel. So if anyone's out there looking for like a camera, I won't get too stuck up on the megapixels for sure. Yeah, definitely. That's no, all about lenses and light and uh, and working with that. Uh, yeah, even if you did sure. want to up-res uh, the, the scaling technology that exists, like if you were to, um, you know, to scale up to higher DPI prints and things, uh, you know, there's great options in in tech. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, really, really good. Um, I just see us cracking the roads, removing this. You're getting a new job as a roadworks engineer. <laughs> yeah, and that's it. Yeah, street cleaner, <laughs> sky replacer. Yeah. Also, when you when you're doing this, um, take into account like obviously the depth of the field as well. So you don't want to be replacing this bit up here with. A bit from here otherwise it just looks completely unnatural so keep it uh, just keep a good idea of like the um the amount of blur sort of thing so just take it from the same part of the image pretty much uh, speaking of uh cameras there's a question in here of uh would you be happy shooting on a newer iphone and editing one of those to the same sort of degree how do you feel about smartphone photography i'm i'm, I'm all for smartphone photography it's um it's unreal where like how far it's come sort of thing mm -hmm. um you know like my my iphone can, can shoot much better photos and video than my first ever camera i bought dslr yeah so it's um they're so so powerful and i think you can get away with so much with uh smartphones these days so i think if if, if you haven't got a camera already like i wouldn't get caught up on having to buy one mm -hmm. um i would say go out and learn photography with a phone and experience it with that. Um, that's, that's, oh, you can do so much with phones. I, I really want to do a video on YouTube, like showing how to shoot real estate on an iPhone, mm -hmm. because I, I, I believe that if anything, it's, it's, it's just as good as what we can get with like modern day cameras, as long as you know what you're doing with it sort of thing. Yeah. Um, oh, hundred percent. Yeah. It's, uh, especially with all the softwares they're bringing out, like Dolby Vision on an iPhone is just like, Oh, it's, it's crazy. Like mm. the HDR software and yeah, there's such powerful things. Uh, can take. I think as well, one of the, one of the most uh, powerful things with it is the immediacy to edit and publish. Everything's all in the one device. Um, so you can really, you know, get instant results on whatever you're doing. You can test in the moment with your, your styles and whatever. Exactly. Yeah. And you've got your, you've got your editing laptop like in your hand sort of thing mm. it's, um, yeah definitely yeah i'm just gonna finish off doing this for you guys and also mentions uh here in the chat from from tim about using raw on the phone um yeah that's something that uh i've experimented quite a lot with with um either the moment app previously or lightroom classic with the uh, uh sorry lightroom cc the um the raw camera on there or even pro raw now on iphone oh, yeah, yeah it's um you, you know, it, it, you asked me like three years ago, four years ago, like shooting raw on an iPhone, you just wouldn't believe it. But mm. nowadays, it's, yeah, it's just insane. It's uh, and you, you can only imagine like how it's going to get better and better. Yeah, definitely. Over the next couple of years, it's uh, yeah. So, so they're such powerful things, and I'm all for them. Um, so yeah, let's have a look at this before and after what we got, and you can see how that completely cleaned up the image. Yeah, and. It's interesting when you uh, when you see the before and after, you realise those distractions were actually distracting. You you may yeah. not have noticed um, until you've removed it. You realise, oh, actually, that was uh, competing with your attention on the image. Yeah, and I think that's that's a key thing to really look out for when editing how how much distractions are actually in, in an image. Because I could probably go ahead and name four more, four or five more things in there mm -hmm. to really distract him. That you got this alarm system you've got that pole i'll, I'll yeah. go ahead and remove that and actually i think i would actually go and remove this building and just oh, really? leave it yeah i i find it's just sticking out there a bit mm -hmm. i think i would just um oh, hold on my microphone's gone oh. yeah it's uh interesting to um yeah take out the building there that's yeah, I think it's just it's just a preference as well. It's, um, can you still? Yeah, all good. Can you hear me? Cool. Transition that. Yeah. Um, 
I think I'm just very particular. Uh, I just think if, if, that, if that building was all the way across, I think it would work. But yeah, that, that's just me, I guess. Um, so yeah, with, with this, and do you want me to go ahead and just show how I'd export this? Uh, yeah, I think that's a, that's a good way to wrap things up for the last five minutes. Yeah. Um, I actually saw a video on alertness from a guy called Ben Clean. I don't know if you've heard of him. Really great photographer in London. Um, and he'd done a YouTube video on this, so it all credit to him sort of thing. Okay. So uh, it, it, it shows like how to go up here to save as the image. Um, let's go to desktop and just save up there. Uh, so you uh, obviously go to JPEG and just click save. And then it comes up to here. Now, I'm not too clued up on it, but I have noticed a massive difference in the image quality once it's exported, as opposed to just through exporting from Lightroom. Mm -hmm. um, these these are settings that he tells us to do, so progressive. And again, he goes into more detail on how to, like what these mean sort of thing, but these are the settings and then literally that's, that's it. Um, and sometimes you even just do it, uh, go to literally just one little click on sharpen as well for in Instagram that usually just benefits on Instagram just a tiny bit and you can see how much that's that's actually really nice as well so yeah I'd go through and export that again just through there but, um, with the integration through Lightroom so if you just click command s it should appear here in Lightroom now um, I know because I was messing up. I think you actually opened it separately in the end. Yeah, so I don't think it done, linked back but, back through. But yeah, normally yeah, that's a link and this round trip. Your final image would be there. Yeah, which is really cool. Oh, here we go. There it is. Nice. So yeah, that's um. I actually quite quite like that image actually. Um, that might have to be an Instagram one. <laughs> there just, we go. Uh, I'll take out that number yep. plate, obviously. So, Replace it with your own name or something else. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's guess it. this car. <laughs> nice. Well, that was uh, yeah, quite a run through of um, a few different images and uh, a stark contrast between the uh, the surreal imagery at the start and going into some of this. It's been great to see your workflow and uh, as we always mention, everyone's got so many different ways of doing things. Uh, so it's always interesting to see different approaches and uh, learn from other people and, and understand their workflow. So. Thank you, Josh, for uh, for sharing that today. Oh, it's been uh, a pleasure. Yeah. Coming up on the stream, uh, so as mentioned, we're here on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. This coming Friday, uh, we've got the final session uh, for the uh, Off Academy. Uh, so we've got some sessions coming up uh, on there, going through some of the uh, more business-minded um, approach to things. And uh, next week, of course, we will be back on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday again. And there is also a Discord chat if you'd like to join in with the Adobe Live uh, UK community and uh, keep the uh, conversation going all about creativity and whatnot. So, uh, yeah, thank you, Josh, for joining today. Um, and uh, we look forward to seeing everyone in a future one real soon. All right. See you, everyone. Bye bye.